coral reefs. What is a coral and what is a coral reef? Corals are these extraordinary ancient animals. They've been on the planet for, you know, 200 million years. That's crazy to think about that, right? They're made up of hundreds of connected things that we call polyps. And the polyp is a mouth with a ring of tentacles around it, connected to the one next door by a bridge of tissue, and underneath the mouth is a simple stomach. Thousands, tens of thousands of them, grow a coral colony or an individual coral. And this, this one here is dead, it's the skeleton. Um, but here, there are thousands of polyps and each of the polyp makes up a tiny structure. So a coral reef is an assembly of many different individuals and species in a place. And if you look at the Great Barrier Reef, for example, which is the largest reef system in the world, that reef can be seen from space. And it all started from a tiny polyp. Amazing to think about that. Now, what makes corals really remarkable is that for all intents and purposes, they get fed from within. They have tiny plants living inside their tissues. Those tiny plants do what all plants can do. They take carbon dioxide and water and they join them together using light, sunlight energy. And they produce oxygen and a food molecule. And that food molecule gets given to the animal. So plant inside my tissues feeds me from within. That is the thing that got me so fascinated when I was starting to do research as an undergraduate. I could not get my head around the fact that they, there were animals that had plants living inside their cells and that they relied on each other intimately, that they interacted in such a way that they were connected really, that when they separated, neither did well. And as I've gone through my career, what I've realized, I'm fascinated actually by the interactions between one organism and another. I'm really fascinated by the interaction of humans and the organism that is the planet. Why are we continuing to behave in ways that we know are detrimental to the planet? And it's so interesting because this theme of being fascinated by how one thing speaks to another and either serves or damages another has kind of been consistent from the microscopic studies that I did early in my career to now this sort of macroscopic view of what's going on on the planet. You know, it's not uncommon to be on a reef and just to be awed by the colors and the fish and the enormous number of other organisms that you find there. And why do you find them there? Because the corals themselves construct such complex skeletons that they create thousands of spaces for other organisms to live in. There's so many things about reefs that we don't yet know. We're still studying them. We don't know why some grow in these large cathedral-like structures and why some are very flat. We don't know why some get damaged really easily by storms and others don't seem to be so affected. When they get hit by a disturbance, sometimes a reef is heavily impacted and many corals die, while the reef right next door doesn't seem to be as disturbed. Um, we've been really lucky in interacting with other people who have seen that we needed something that we really couldn't afford. And um, the Amidias came forward and said they'd like to buy us a microscope to allow us to visualize sort of these intimate things that were going on at the sub-visual scale in corals and in other organisms that we study. And um, they gave us a gift that allowed us to purchase this extraordinary confocal microscope that allows us to watch the living coral respond to climate change stress. We can do experiments on the, on the microscope itself that allows us to watch corals respond to warmer water and more acidic water. It's the only microscope in the world that is configured to allow for these kinds of experiments to be done. So we, when we turn the, the, the confocal microscope on, remember this is the first time that we are actually visualizing a living 
coral under this microscope. And I was, my, my, I was what we call in England, gobsmacked. I couldn't believe my eyes. There was so much more movement than I expected. And I think, I realized I just love microscopy. I love looking at the small scale and thinking about then what the small scale tells us about the big scale.